in this video i am going to uh, talk about what is a confusion matrix and what are the uses of confusion matrix and how to create a, uh, create a confusion matrix uh, in in classification models okay as i've already said um, confusion matrix is useful when you are uh, building a classification model so classification models uh, as you uh, as you know um, is used when you want to classify um, your data into different categories okay so um, in the case of a credit card portfolio data um, and you have got good credit card customers and bad credit card customers and say you want to uh, build a predictive model which classify your customers or new customers into uh, either good or bad category okay so you uh, build um, a classification model um, um, using using the customer attributes you, you have built it and once you have built and you have scored uh, your data so what do you mean by score uh, score is nothing but uh, using your beta parameters and the customer data or the attributes uh, belonging to the customers you try to find out the probability uh, probability that a customer is uh, bad right so if a customer uh, we try to uh, find out the probability that a customer is bad right so um, before even trying to understand what is a confu uh, confusion matrix let me just uh, tell you that uh, um, what is the prerequisite for a confusion matrix okay so the prerequisite is that um, we are we are building a classification model and um, once we have the model in place so uh, we, we get the uh, scores from the model right so once we have the scores we use a cutoff value and then we find out what is known as the predicted uh, value of the tra target variable right um, so in this case let's say we have this seven data points we have got the target variable uh, for the actual data okay so if a customer is bad we uh, give him uh, one else is zero okay so that's how we denote uh, good bad customers now using this model uh, that we have estimated we have this uh, probability score corresponding probability score right and then we use a cutoff value normally the cutoff value is 0.5 uh, it can be anything though and I will talk about that how to come up with the uh, optimal cutoff score um, using the cutoff value uh, if it is greater than 0.5 then I assign it as 1 else it's 0 so based on this criteria I have used this predicted value right so in this case its score is 0.5 so the predicted value is 0 right the actual one is 1 but the predicted is 0 and I followed with the same rule and uh, I know categorize the entire data set into uh, 1 and 0 right so what is the purpose of doing this well we are going to do this on the tasting data or taste data okay or the holdout sample just to see how accurate is the uh, model um, or how uh, accurate is the prediction uh, by the model right um, you can see there are mismatches there are good match uh, there are matches as well for example in uh, in the first case the actual is one but predicted is zero so it's a mismatch the next one uh, it's a match right so what is a confusion matrix so confusion matrix gives you a count of what is the number of uh, matches and what is the number of mismatches and it gives in a tabulated form and we we have given um, it a name known as confusion matrix right uh, although it, it, the name is confusion uh, matrix, but it is not at all uh, confusing to understand it. It's very simple. It's just a count of uh, your matches and uh, mismatches. Okay, so here is how a confusion matrix look like. We have seen it in the 
previous uh, table, uh, the score and the actual and the predicted uh, values. Now we just take a count of that, right? So we have got four basic types of uh, matching and mismatching, right? The first one is the predicted value is one. The predicted value is one. And the actual value is also one, right? That means the predicted is bad and the actual is also bad. So how many number of cases are there? Only two cases are there, right? The next one is the predicted value is zero and the actual value is also zero or the predicted value is a good customer and actual is also a good customer. And in the data that we have taken, there are three cases where it is uh, the criteria is have, uh, satisfied. And the next one is the predicted value is zero, but the actual value is one. Remember, the predicted value is coming from the uh, score from the model, right? So there is only one case which satisfy this. The next one is the predicted value is one and the actual value is zero. That means it's the opposite of the uh, this one. It's the opposite of this one, okay? So, and, and we have got one case uh, in that, right? Now we have got four different categories of matching and mismatching. So matching category is the diagonal element and the off diagonal elements are the mismatching case. Now what do you really expect the model to do, right? We always want this uh, diagonal uh, numbers to be maximum, right? And the off diagonal number should be minimum, as minimum as possible. That's what is expected from the model, right? So, uh, by looking at the confusion matrix, one will get to know how well the model is performing, whether it's performing well or whether it, it's not performing. Okay. There is another use of perform, uh, confusion matrix, right? Out of these four uh, different, uh, you know, categories of matching and mismatching, sometimes it is very important um, to know the count of one of these matching and mismatching. For example, if we're building a credit card, uh, credit scorecard um, for a portfolio uh, on credit card, uh, as we have already said, um, you'll be worrying about whether you are able to capture the bad customers or not. You, you will not be worrying about this particular uh, uh, number. You will be worrying about the first, uh, uh, you know, this first um, uh, category like right? the predicted is one and actually is one right you want this number to you know be as maximum as possible because that's what matter to you similarly in the case of a fraud model if we're uh, having a fraud model you'll also you'll always want to know how many numbers of fraud cases have been captured by the model you will be least interested to know how many are not that that's of different uh, type of problem and it doesn't really interest you at this moment um, so, looking at the uh, metrics, you will be able to, uh, uh, you know, select the best model that really uh, suit your requirement or really um, uh, helps you finding out um, the requisite uh, uh, or the actual um, number of, uh, you know, events that are happening, which is of interest to you. Now you can use this matrix to uh, use model uh, validation to do model validation. Okay, so how do you do that? So uh, we compute what is known as an accuracy rate. So it's it's computed by the correct prediction by the total uh, number of pairs. Um, well, in the previous case, if you see, if you go back, the accurate cases are two in this case and three, right? And the inaccurate are one in this case and one. So there are five accurate uh, cases or five matching pairs and two or non-matching pairs. So the accuracy is uh, the matching pairs by the total number of pairs. Total number of pair in this case is seven and matching cases is five. So when you uh, divide that number to get uh, 0.71, so 71% is the accuracy rate. And we always want this uh, percentage to be as high as possible, right? So, um, and we always compute that in the uh, test data set, right? Because training data set anyway, uh, 
would likely to give a good numbers but what we want is even the test data set should actually give um, a good percentage of accuracy otherwise it, it's not a very good model secondly the accuracy rate should be greater than 0.5 otherwise we are not doing anything better than a random guess right because if you toss a coin and select a good customer and a bad customer 50 50 percent of the times you you are likely to get if the coin is an unbiased uh, right you, you will uh, get it right um, so you should uh, this number should always be uh, greater than 0.5 um, and and if it is less than that then uh, your model is ter terrible you should you should uh, do something about it and the wrong prediction of course we can also count uh, you can also um, calculate by subtracting from one and this number should be uh, as minimum as possible it, this particular matrix also plays some role in the model implementation strategy right and to find out what is an optimal cutoff score remember that numbers in this uh, previous uh, slide uh, in the confusion matrix we have got by assuming that the cutoff score is 0.5 that means the probability that a customer is going to uh, be a bad customer if he has a probability score of greater than 0.5 now how do we come up with this number who who told us that this number to be used well this is uh, you know it's, it's just uh, an assumption you can always change the number in fact um, it is really flexible it if a conservative uh, you want uh, that anyone with a score of 0.4 he should be considered as a bad customer well you can use that you can also use 0.3 or else if you're a little more liberal um, you you're a little lenient um, then you can also use something like 0.6 or 0.7 um, although most of the times people are more conservative than uh, lenient okay so they're very conservative uh, in the financial industries uh, where the cut-up score is um, less uh, you know it's not 0.5 it's, it's uh, less than that right so um, and you will get different number in this case okay um, you will get different numbers and I urge you to uh, change the number and see how this numbers uh, um, the correct prediction uh, and the wrong prediction is actually changing so you can do it as an exercise so we always want this accuracy numbers to actually go up or to be uh, as high as possible so you keep on changing your cutoff score to ensure that the accuracy is uh, very high and that's how we come up with uh, the optimal cutoff optimal cutoff and you use that cutoff uh, when you implement your model for um, you know finding out good bad customers in the actual in the real scenario right because in a real scenario all you want is this uh, score right cutoff score right you have all your scores from customers use the cutoff score and they categorize them so what should be the good one the one that gives highest accuracy so confusion matrix really helps you finding out that